When you want to apply textures to a model, the first thing that comes to mind is probably to project them from a certain angle onto the model. A problem arises when you want to project onto a model that isn't flat, like a character's arm for example. I'm going to show you a way to transfer a texture onto a complex model without stretching the texture that is simple and quick to do. We need an image texture that we can use as a texture, I mean as a tattoo. So that's the texture that we want to project onto the character. Now that we have the image texture, we need an add-on that we can use to import the image as a geometry into Blender. What we're going to use for that is the add-on image as planes. So you should find it in the preferences in the add-on list. We go to image, image as planes. We select the tattoo that we want to use. Benefit of using that plugin is that it factors in the aspect ratio that there's no stretching basically in the texture. What we want to do now is we want to prepare the shader of that image. The add-on prepares it like this. What we want to use a emission shader. We want to use a transparent shader and then we want to combine them. We want to mix them, put them in the surface. And we want to put the color into the emission and we want to put the alpha into the factor of the mix shader. Invert. Everything is transparent. That is not color or that is not part of the tattoo. And now we have the, the geometry for the tattoo prepared. Now what we need to do is we need to add more geometries so that we can actually wrap it around the surface or the character's arm. I always like to make sure that the faces are basically quadratic or have the same length as width that just leads to better deformations. Um, for this instance here, we want to wrap it. We want to wrap this geometry around her arm. How I want to do it is I'm going to bring the pivot point down here to the vertices down there. Shift S, cursor to select it. And then we're going to spawn. <laughs> we're going to add a busier curve. We're going to straighten it real quick. I want to let it start at the bottom of the plane and then end it at the top of the plane. So we need to do that real quick. Rotate 90 degrees. There you go. It's supposed to face upwards so that the flow of the curve follows the plane. It starts right there and ends up here. We need to go into the plane. We need to add a modifier, which is called curve. So now if we select this curve, the plane will follow the curve uh, shape. If we select the correct uh, axis and we change, we move the curve now, you can see the plane follows the curve shape. There you go. It follows the curve. So now we can basically use that curve to wrap it around the arm, to wrap it, to wrap the plane around the arm. We're going to move it onto uh, the arm where it's supposed to begin. We can use snapping for that, for example, to project it onto the surface. There you go. We can even go into material preview so we can see where it begins. It's probably a little bit too big. Let's make it smaller. And then we can use the curve to wrap it around the body. There you go. We're trying to wrap this as close to the body as possible. If you select all of them, you can press Ctrl T to tr twist them and rotate them basically. Okay, extrude it. Do the next one down here. We bring it all the way here. If the plane isn't big enough or long enough, we can also just go into edit mode, select everything. Um, because the plane, I want to scale it upwards, make it longer. I say scale from active element. So this selected vertice, if I now scale on the local Y axis, I can make it longer, which means that it has more room. We need to make it even longer. So now that we have the geometry wrapped around the arm, the next step would be to project it onto the arm because what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to take the shape of the arm. So now that we have this, we can basically apply a shrink wrap modifier to shrink wrap it onto the arm and then we can increase the offset to bring it over the arm. Let's look at the material preview and you can see it's now hovering over the arm, basically in the place where it's supposed to be like on the arm, I guess you could say. One more thing I forgot to mention, make sure to add a subdivision modifier to the texture mesh and crease the edges to create more accurate results. So what we what we just did is we projected it onto the arm so that it takes the shape of the arm a little bit better rather than just kind of wrapping around it. It actually like takes the shape and then we use the offset to bring it above the arm so we can see if it's in the right posi position or we still need to change the shape. One problem that we can see here is that it's sort of 
project in the other direction. Maybe we can fix that with some changes to the curve. If there are some problems, you can still adjust it, of course. We have the geometry in the right position, so we're going to apply the curve modifier as well as the shrink wrap modifier. The next step would be to project it or to bake it onto the UVs of this model. What we need to do now is we need to create a texture that this texture here on this plane can be projected onto. So we're going to go to the body. We're going to make a new texture. Texture, image texture, new one. We're going to call it ultimate snake. Okay, it's the ultimate snake. Resolution you can determine for yourself depending on what you need. 32 bit just to make the edges a little, little bit better. So we have the texture that we want to project it onto. We have the object that we want to project from. And we have the geometry or we have the model that we want to predict we, we want to predict onto. Now we can go into the bake settings. We make sure that selected to active is on. One thing we need to make sure is that the normals, which you can see if we go to the edit mode, we go to overlay settings here up there. We go to this little arrow and we select the faces down here, the normals, display normals for the faces. There you can see what the normals look like for the plane right now. We can see that they're wrong. We need to flip them. So we're going to flip them so that they point outwards because baking basically bakes in the opposite direction of the normal. So it bakes, it bakes inwards. And then there's one more thing, which is kind of weird. I don't really know why it works that way, but we need to make sure that the faces of the object that we want to bake onto face inwards for some reason. Okay, <laughs> so the normal should normally look like this. So they point outwards, but we need to make we need them to point inwards, as you can see right here, they all pay a point inwards to make sure that the plane points outwards and the geometry that we want to predict onto points inwards. Then we select the plane where the tattoo is on. We select the geometry that we want to apply the tattoo to. We select the texture that is supposed to receive the tattoo. And then we go to baking, make sure that the bake type is set to emit. There you go tick selected to active you don't need max ray distance necessarily you can play around with it sometimes it it projected onto the entire body then you can decrease the max ray distance if it's at zero it projects infinitely if it's like 0.01 for example it projects it that much if the distance from the object to the receiving object is longer than the max ray distance then it's gonna um, not include that in in the bake. So if if you also see some projection on the body, for example, you need to change it from zero to a value that is smaller until you don't project it onto the body anymore. So now that we have selected everything, we have the texture selected. We're gonna bake it. A few inches later. So now that we that the bake is done, let's see what the final result looked like. We're gonna go to material preview to look at it. You can see everything's black. So if we look at the image texture, there you go. There we have the tattoo. And now the tattoo is actually a texture that we can apply to the skin texture of this model. We could use a shader, mix shader, put that in there, use the color, put that into the factor, and then we can add another shader into the second shader slot, which will then basically be used for the tattoo shader. So what we could do is we could bring this to blue, and now we have a blue snake on her arm.